So our objective for today, I can factor quadratic trinomials. Read together, one, two, three. I can factor quadratic trinomials. So today I'm just going to use it as a practice day because I want to make sure that, uh, that we get some practice in before we continue. However, um, let me just quickly um, reiterate what I covered some time back. I think I already covered it with you guys. If I didn't, then this will be something new. But if I did, hopefully this is something that uh, refreshes your memory. So look up. So this is how your brain works. Ready? Here's your brain. You see where I'm at? Okay. Right here is your short-term memory. Back here is our long-term memory. Okay. So, how does the brain work? The brain works on, it learns every day. Every day it learns from our senses. How many senses? Five. Now, some of you in the classroom learn best by listening. Some of you learn best by touching and doing stuff. And some of you learn best by seeing. However, the majority of us learn by listening and seeing. And that's why when I ask you, when I'm about to explain something, I ask you guys to put your pencils down and focus so that you can learn. So anything that goes in, it goes in here. Look up. In here into the short-term memory. However, in order for us to use whatever we learned again and again, such as riding a bike, remember when you, some of you, when you first learned to ride a bike when you were little? How many times did you do it? A lot of times, right? Well, guess what? In order for us to go to learn, that goes from the uh, short-term memory that we learned, in order for it to go to the long-term memory, we need to repeat it times at least 7 to 12 repetitions. Then you become a master. So, how many times do we need at least? About 7 and to 12. Now let's think. Throughout the school year, what was what is the average amount of problems I leave before home plate? About ten, right? Isn't that right in between here? Yes. Because guess what? In order for something to go from the short term memory to the long term memory, it has to be repeated ten to twelve times. However, check this out, it needs to be done within twenty four hours. Well, Mr. Q, what happens if we don't do it within 24 hours? All right, so here we go. So what was I saying? In order for something to go from the short-term memory to the long-term memory, it needs to be practiced or repeated 7 to 12 times within 24 hours. That's why I assign at least an average of 10 problems every day. Now, not you guys, but some of your friends, not you guys, some of your friends that don't do home play, because I'm pretty sure you asked, what if we don't practice it within 24 hours? Doesn't matter if it was the easiest thing to learn. If you didn't practice it within 24 hours, you all, your brain only keeps 50 to 60%. What does that mean, Mr. Q? Well, let's think about your friends. When they get to a pop party, if they're the friends that haven't done their home play, that you give them the home play for free for them to copy. As soon as they sit down, they're given their pop party. As soon as they write their name, they period on it. What's the most that they can get on that pop party? 50 to 60%. Tops. Which means if they make mistakes, along the way, that's why your friends are scoring anywhere from 
30% to 50% because their noodle doesn't have the information. Does that make sense? Am I talking crazy over here, or is everybody uh, following along? So what is the moral of the story? Do your home play. Because what if, what's tomorrow, Friday? And what happens tomorrow on Friday? Okay, Pop RK, all right. No, I was, I was about to say we had a three-day weekend, but that's fine. We'll do a pop party tomorrow. Let's go. <laughs> so uh, to practice the process one more time, get a blank sheet of paper out. We're going to practice the process that we did yesterday. Example Q. For those of you that uh, somehow misplaced your home play, here goes. Copy this. Let's do... Uh, x squared plus 5x plus 4. Now let's go over the entire process. What are the first two things that we check? First thing is standard form. Second thing is to see if it has a GCF. Is it in standard form? Yes. Does it have a GCF other than 1? No. From there we start our process. And I said we use our power readers. Du, 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 du. In order to fill this, we use the last term goes on top. That's our product. The middle term goes underneath. That's our sum. Before I worry about any of this, I need to start with the top number, this one, our product, and find the pairs of factors. 1 times 4 and 2 times 2. Are there any other pairs of factors? No. From there you think. Which of these pairs adds up to the sum, which is 5? 1 and 4. Once I have those, I'm going to rewrite this one right here. x squared. I'm going to box the middle term because I'm not going to use that one. What am I going to use? The two that we, I came up with. What are the two numbers? 1x plus 4x. Does that make sense? That was replaced by that. And then I write my last term. Our last term is plus 4. Now we go and use the process that we know, which is a, uh, by grouping. These two, these two. GCF for these two is x. We're left with x plus 1. GCF for these two is 4, and we're left with x plus 1. My factors are x plus 1 and x plus 4. And these are my factors. Do another one? Yeah. Example super Q. Do this one by yourself. See how you do. Let's do um, x squared plus 7x plus 10. I'll leave that up there so you can see the process. Copy that in and go. All right, let's see. What are the first two things we check for? Standard form and GCF. Yeah. From there, R rangers, da, 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 da. which one goes on top? The last term, that's our product. Which one goes underneath? The middle term, that's our sum. From there, we focus on the top one, our product, and find our pairs of factors. 1 times 10, 2 times 5, and that's it. Now, look up. This is how I get my pairs of factors. I start with 1, and I think 1 times what gives me that number? 10. Then I go to the next number down, which is what? 2. 2 times what gives me that number? 5. Then the next one, 3, no, 4, no, then 5, and guess what? It repeats, and I stop. So therefore, I think from right there, that's all I have. Which one of these adds up to 7? 2 and 5. Therefore, I rewrite my trinomial, x squared. But instead of 7x, what do I write? 2x plus 5x and bring down the 10. Group these two. Group these two. GCF here is x. We're left with x plus 2. 
plus DCF is 5. We're left with X plus 2. My factors are X plus 2, X plus 5. These are my factors. By the way, guys, um, this process is a process that you're going to need for Algebra 2. That's why I, I am very adamant of practicing this same process. Except for instead of just doing quadratics, you're going to do to the fourth power, to the eighth power, and so on and so forth. However, some of you are doing this. I saw on the home page, some of you just came up to me and you did this. You did this and that. Oh, sorry. Same thing here. You didn't do this. You did this and that. Well, guess what? Yeah, that's a shortcut. I don't know if you guys saw it. Look. Look at these two. Look at these. Look at these two. Look at this. But it, did I ask you to do the shortcut? No, because no, if you do the shortcut, by the time you get to Algebra 2, two years from now, you will not remember this. That's what we need to, to do. Do what? Repetition, right? All right, let's do another one. See if you can do this next one by yourself in 30 seconds. Example, yeah. example mega cube. What? Oh. 30 seconds? Here we go. X squared, yeah, 30 seconds, plus 10X plus 24. See what you get for that? Copy and go. Okay, here goes the process. Is it in standard form? Yes. Does it have DCF other than one? No. From there, Power Rangers. Da, 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 da. 24 goes on top. That's my product. Middle term goes underneath. That's my sum. I only worry about the top one. Find the pairs of factors. 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6, and then they repeat. Which one of those pairs adds up to 10? 4 and 6. Therefore, I rewrite my trinomial, x squared plus 4x plus 6x, and the last term. Group the first two, group the last two, GCF here is x, x plus 4, GCF here is 6, we're left with x plus 4, x plus 4 times x plus 6, and these are my factors. Hands, have you got that? Okay. From there... They're going to start, and now that we have all positive ones, we're good. But then they start throwing you and giving you ones with negative numbers. Okay, bless you. Copy this one. Example, MJQ. Let's do um, X squared minus 16X plus 48. We're going to do this one together. Standard form, yes. GCF other than 1? No. Power Rangers? Du, 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 du. Which one goes on top? The 48. That's my product. Which one goes underneath? Negative 16. Negative 16. That's my sum. Don't worry about that one yet. Let's worry about this one first. Find all pairs of factors. What are my pairs of factors? 1 times 48. 2 times 24. 3 times 16, is it? 4 times 12, 5 times nothing, 6 times 8, 7 times nothing, and 8 times 6, and then they start repeating. Now, looking at those pairs of factors, which one, if we add them, come close to that number? So, not this one, that's totally way off. Same thing with this one. Or this one, I think it's going to be this one. So I write 4 and 12. However, instead of being positive 16, because 4 plus 12 is 16, what is this one negative? What does that tell us? That this one is negative and this one is negative. Negative 4 plus negative 12 is what? Negative 16. Negative 4 times negative 12 is positive 48. Yes, that's true. That works. So let's rewrite this x squared, and instead of writing negative 16, what am I going to write? Negative 4x, negative 12x, plus 48. 
group, group. Remember to include that negative there. GCF for these two is x. We're left with x minus 4. GCF for these two is 12, but this one has a negative on the first term, so it's negative 12. So we're left with x minus 4. Factors are x minus 4, x minus 12, and those are my factors. All right. Do this one by yourself. Example, Star Wars Q. Example, Star Wars Q. Let's see. Let's do uh, A squared minus 20A plus 36. Very similar to the one we just did. Copy and go. Okay, you should be just about done. Power Rangers, da, 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 da. 36 goes on top, that's my product. Negative 20 underneath, that's my sum. I'm going to look for the pairs of factor of 36. 1 times 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9, and 6 times 6. Which one of those would add or subtract to give us negative 20? 2 and 18, but what do we know? Both of them have to be what? Negative. That is correct. So therefore, a squared, this becomes these two. So we write minus 2a minus 18a plus 36. Group, group, plus there. a is my GCF, a minus 2 the remainder. GCF here is negative 18. We're left with a minus 2. My factors are a minus 2 times a minus 18. These are my factors. And have you got that? Okay, good. So notice on this, all you have to do is start, like, get all your pairs of factors, start messing around to see which one is going to be the negative, right? And one last one. Here we go. Example, Power Rangers Q. All right, let's see. Let's do, um, let's see, x squared plus 3x minus 28. Standard form, yes. GCF other than 1, no. Power Rangers, do, 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 do. what goes on top? Negative 28, that's my product. What goes underneath? 3, that's my sum. So let's see, pairs of factors for 28. 1 times what? 28. 2 times what? 14. 3 times nothing. 4 times 7. 5, no. 6, no. 7 times 4, and then repeat. All right, so which one of those pairs adds or subtract to give us 7? I mean, to give us 3, 4, and 7. So now check this out. This one you got to think. These combined give us 3. That means one of them has to be a negative. Is that correct? But the answer has to be a positive 3. That means the biggest number is a positive. So if the biggest number is 7 is a positive, that means the 4 is our negative. That is correct. Negative 4 times 7, that's negative 28. Negative 4 plus 7, that's positive 3. So we write x squared minus 4x plus 7x minus 28. GCF for these two is x. We're left with x minus 4 plus GCF for these two is 7. We're left with x minus 4. And we're left with x minus 4 times x plus 7. Those are my factors. Show me the fingers how comfortable you are with these. Okay. Our home play for tonight is on page 538. Enjoy. There is tutoring. If I don't see you, see you guys tomorrow. Bye.